Hello everyone. Today I want, I want to offer my encouragement to people who are troubled by the COVID-19 crisis. First of all, I just want to bring to mind, especially those who are sick, and my heart goes out to them and to their family members. Also many, many friends and family members are healthcare workers or they're first responders and their lives are in jeopardy because of their care for the sick and, and obviously we're anxious for them. Elderly people and those with underlying health conditions themselves are apprehensive or isolated. Others have lost their jobs. We know business, many businesses are struggling financially, even afraid of losing their businesses. Death tolls are rising daily. Finally, we must not forget the poor, those who don't have a home to shelter in those who may be actually living on the streets or in refugee camps. Just to keep in mind all the needs there that are out there these days and all who are troubled. In these trying times, people yearn to be close to family and friends and obviously they would find consolation in their church community and especially church um, liturgies and, and gatherings. Yet the warning to practice social distancing causes separation. I believe it's better to say Let's practice physical distancing and social closeness. That is, we need to avoid groups, but we need each other. We need human contact to really thrive and survive as human beings. We need social closeness, and at this time that requires creativity. It means that we can write letters, we can call people on the telephone, send a text of encouragement, make a meal for someone, or even order a meal to be brought to their home by, by businesses that are providing takeout meals. At this time, Catholic Christians will not be sub celebrating public liturgies for Holy Week and Easter. That feels strange and empty and it's deeply painful for all of us, clergy and laity alike. The last time serv worship services were, were canceled was during the 1918 flu pandemic. Many Catholics are asking why I suspended all public liturgies. The Eucharist is an immense source of grace for us. So a bishop could, should never even think of doing that unless there's an emergency situation. To make prudent decisions, I formed a COVID-19 response team. It includes four pastors, three lay leaders who work here at the Chancery, and two doctors who are lifelong Catholics and have 40 years of practice practicing medicine. Our decisions have been based on our faith in God, medical science, and values that uphold the common good. An essential value behind our decisions is solidarity. We're, we're obligated to do all we can to help prevent the transmission of COVID-19, especially to the elderly and those with underlying health conditions. Solidarity requires us to prevent any person to contract this disease. At this time, public gatherings endanger those in attendance who in turn could infect others. We must be co-responsible citizens. We need to uphold the common good of all people, not just the good that we look forward to as Christians as we gather for our public services in church. While ceasing public liturgies is a drastic measure, it will help mitigate the transmission of COVID-19. It is a concrete way of loving our neighbor. And even some of the saints, many of the saints would say loving neighbor and loving God are intrinsically connected. It is a way also then of loving our God. Initially, Italy closed their churches and then some pastors had outdoor masses, but their bishops and the police asked them to stop. Those pastors wanted to feed their people spiritually. They're good people. But the result was that more people were infected with COVID-19 and are dying. Today, April 6th, in excess of 16,000 people have died in Italy, and that includes 87 priests. In the Diocese of Bergamo alone, 25 priests have died of COVID-19. When I suspended masses, I was not thinking just of the next few weeks, but of the next several years. If some of our priests would die from COVID-19, it may mean that some communities, instead of going weeks without Mass or months without Mass, could go for 10 years without Mass. 
Now, how can we celebrate Holy Week and Easter in a way that will feed us spiritually in this time when we can't, can, are not gathering for public liturgies? I want you to consider the, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus as they're walking and discussing in distress the death of Jesus. The risen Lord begins to walk with them. As he explained the scriptures to them, their hearts were burning with his love. That story we hear in the 24th chapter of Luke. Or think about those disciples hiding behind closed doors because they're afraid on Easter day. But the risen Lord stuns them by his presence and his peace. That's a story we hear in John chapter 20. They spent Easter in isolation. And yet the risen Lord appeared to them and again filled them with his peace. Reading the scriptures is crucial this year, especially as we celebrate Holy Week. Do this as a family, and if you're alone, I encourage you to call someone and reflect on a scripture passage together with that person. A second way to observe the passion, death, and resurrection of the Lord is to love your neighbor. Imitate the love poured out on the cross. When you lonely, reach out to others. When we die to ourselves, God always fills us with his life, a life that flows from the risen Christ. Our model is the Paschal mystery. Trust like Christ in suffering. Live and die for others. And be hopeful that right now we experience the presence of the risen Christ. By our baptism, we were baptized into his presence. Paul says we live in Christ. We are right now living in the resurrection. Not in fullness because of our suffering, but it is part of our reality. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's death and resurrection by listening to his words and imitating his love, then we will share in his triumph over death. God bless you.